Hi everybody, my name is Matthew Pose with Pose Acoustics. And in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my consulting services and how that works. And I'm actually gonna raise an issue and I know that the individual who brought this to my attention, um, I, I just wanna start by saying I appreciate that he brought it up the way he did, that I think that we had a helpful conversation and that I'm using this as an opportunity to kind of clear the air so everybody understands where I stand. I think he, in the end, felt the same way, um, but I want to make sure that there is no misunderstandings. So let's start with the fact that I am well known and well regarded in the industry and especially in the portions of the industry that most closely align with what I do for work. And in terms of what I do for work, for the, cause I sometimes get comments that make me think people don't realize that I do this for a living. I design and consult on high end home theaters, high end media rooms, uh, studios, potentially commercial cinemas. Um, I have a couple of those actually coming up. And in addition to all of that, I also do consulting for architecture firms and interior design firms around sound, comfort, noise, things like that. So this is what I do for a living. I work with lots of people in the industry who sell hardware and software for the purposes of doing that. I have excuse me, special relationships with those manufacturers. Those are necessary because for me to be effective to do my job, I need to know everything there is to know about the product and how it works. I need to understand how to use it and I need to know how to use it better than all of my contemporaries because otherwise I can't be the best at what I do. Now to do that does require a close working relationship with these guys and so if you call PAC International and you get a hold of a guy named Mike who works there in the engineering firm, he's going to know who I am and he's probably going to have nice things to say about me. And if you call Kinetics to order some sound isolation or to ask about them or to ask if my recommendation of a Kinetics product made sense, they're going to know who I am and they're probably gonna have nice things to say about me. And if you were to call Hushframe, another company I work with, they're gonna know who I am, and so on and so forth. Many, many people in the industry know who I am because they've worked with me, not just because of some sort of notoriety, not because they've seen my videos, that may be true too, but because we work together in some way or, you know, or one form. So what that means is that ultimately, I have some conflicts, if that's what you wanna call them, but I think that my own morals are what set me apart in my role. Um, so let's start with the fact that yes, I work with these people, I know them. And then do I have something to gain? Well, I'm a dealer for all those products. I have to be because it's difficult for me to be able to work with you and get you the things that you need to make your project effective to ultimately reach your goals if I can't get them for you. Because then you're stuck having to source what may be very unusual products or materials on your own. So, so I'm a dealer and I make money on them. Now you may say, well, I mean, do you have to make money on it? Can't you just like pass it along? Well, let's start with the fact that again, this is how I put food on the table. This is how I make a living. Uh, the other part of the making money on it is that there's time that goes into doing that. If you, if we're doing some sort of a sound isolation project and I don't do the engineering for you and all I'm really doing is sourcing it and you tell me you need 200 clips, it's not as simple as I just call them up and order 200 clips. And even if I did that, it probably still takes me an hour to process an order in total work time uh, to get you 200 clips. There's emails, confirmations of quantity, sending of address information, processing of payments. I, I actually pay money to process a payment. It costs me on credit cards, it's three, three and a quarter percent. So I have to take profit to be able to cover all of that. I also have overhead to operate a business. It's not a lot, you know, I'm not a huge business, but I have overhead, it's not nothing. I have, as part of being able to do my job well, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of software, and that's just annual subscription fees that I pay in order to do this. So keep that in mind. Um, then there's the products like speakers, subwoofers, processors, Trinov, Storm, Morant, Sten, and things like that. I have dealer accounts with those companies. I know many of them very well. Many of them do know me by name and I make money on selling the product. I recommend the products that I sell, but it really should be thought of the other way around. I sell the products that I would recommend. It's how this all started. I just was having a situation where frequently I was giving clients my recommendations. You know, it, I tried to stay out of the sales side of it. I thought that there was maybe some value in that. Um, and I was giving people consultations without selling product. I would say, go to your local dealer, talk to the dealer, tell them that you've been instructed <clears throat> to purchase this, 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 and this. And then, you know, you're going to get your system that we've talked about and you're going to get the experience you're looking for. And they'd go there. And unfortunately, because of the way the industry works, those dealers would talk them out of those products. 
they would then seek to talk them into products with, let's say, a higher margin. And as a result of that, uh, the client would come back to me and say, so they gave me a really good deal on this um, you know, brand X. And I know you told me to get brand Y, but they say that it's just as good or better and they're giving me a better price on it. So I did that. And the problem is then I know that's not true. I know that what they bought is an inferior product, but it's also one that the dealer was making more money on. And that's why they gave the better deal on it. Even if they didn't make more money on it, it may be that they needed to maintain their sales goals, something like that on the brand because that's how they get bigger margin. So I got frustrated because I kept making these recommendations for specific brands I knew were gonna meet that person's requirements and they were being talked out of it. And I had no ability to go in and say, no, 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 don't listen to them. That's the wrong advice. This is what you need. Sometimes they'd come back to me unhappy and even blaming me having gone down that road. So I sell products, that's why I sell products. And when I sell them to you and make those recommendations to you, yeah, I make money on it. And again, I have a relationship with them. So that is, that's how I work. And somebody had come into a situation where basically things were mishandled badly. And I would like to say I, I am not the one who mishandled it, but I'm sure there's things I could have done to make sure that things didn't go the way they did uh, to make that situation better. And it was upsetting to me as much as it was upsetting to the person that it happened to. So we ended up having a, what I think was a good conversation to basically say, yeah, I mean, all this is true. And yes, I make money on this stuff. And yes, this has put you in a bad position. But in this case, we made the person whole by making sure they got the deal they were supposed to get on the product they wanted, also the product I was recommending. And, and I had a conversation with the company to basically say, please, let's not do that again. That you know really left a bad taste in everybody's mouth and that really wasn't appropriate. But I, I don't want you guys to come to me expecting to get advice from me and then assuming that I get nothing out of it. It's just not how it works. So then for you to believe that the advice I'm giving you is the right advice, you have to start with believing in who I am and what I do, which is that I know more about these products than the vast majority of people, even who work in the industry. I know about how they perform and I'm somebody who puts performance and experience over price. So what I'm trying to do is recommend to you things that are gonna give you what you're looking for, that I know will make you happy. They may cost more than you wanted to spend, and then the issue becomes what you want, you can't afford, if that's the where it is. Or what you want is gonna cost more than you thought you were gonna spend, that, that could be true too. And then we get into conversations, that you know, I call it value engineering. How can I get you something that, it's not gonna give you the experience you asked for, but it's gonna give you a good experience at a price point that is within the range of what you wanna do, either what you can afford or what you're comfortable spending, or both. Um, I do that because I believe that people should be getting the best performance, that they should be getting the experiences they ask for. And so I don't make recommendations based on the money I make. I make recommendations based on what I believe is gonna be what's right for you. And I hold my morals very strong in that regard. So I don't create a separation between the products that I recommend and some sort of financial benefit. There is a conflict because of that. And I simply am telling you to understand that I am a good person who is doing this because it's the way I can make money. Also ensuring that you get the best possible stuff. It's how this world works in a sense, right? So you may say, well, I don't believe you because anybody could say that, but lots of people are profit driven and that's true. But in my case, all I can say is look at the work and look at the recommendations. You know, I recommend, I've been recommending RTJ subwoofers, for instance. Um, RTJ subwoofers cannot be called bad subwoofers. They are excellent subwoofers. So the recommendation is a solid recommendation. I recommend Perlison speakers. Same thing. They're expensive, but they're not that expensive. And there are definitely much, much more expensive speakers in the industry. And yet the performance is very, very high, even for their price point. The build quality is very high for their price their price point. So nobody could tell, you could argue that I'm making a bad recommendation simply because I'm a dealer for that brand and I, and I happen to want to sell it. They're excellent speakers. And I recommend them over other brands in particular because they're better than those brands. And you can point to factual evidence to support that. They have a higher max SPL for a given distortion level. They have a flatter, smoother response typically. Or if the flatness and smoothness of the response is the same, again, they've got other attributes that make them better so it would be maybe that they have the flatness, the smoothness, the really good directivity index, but they also play louder. Because there are other speakers that have an even flatter response, but they just don't play loud enough to be used in a cinema environment. Or they have a better directivity index yet, which is actually very rare, but let's just say they did. But like the response isn't as smooth, or they don't play loud enough. 
these do the three things that are most important. So that's why I recommend that brand. Kef is another brand that I'm a big supporter of. It's the same thing. They don't play as loud as the Perlicens, but if you're scaling it down a little bit in terms of what you need, they offer a really good frequency response. They have a really good directivity index to them, meaning the off-axis response is very consistent and well-controlled. And they play louder than most speakers within their given price point and size. So that makes them a, a good speaker for somebody in that class. Um, I, you know, I work with Anthony Grimani. He's a partner. Grimani Systems is a really good speaker. They're, you know, above per listen and output. So what do you do when the room is too big for something like a per listen? Well, you got to go to a speaker like that. Another brand that I work with and I know Jeffrey really well, so is Ascendo. Same thing. You know, those are a speaker that when the room gets actually even bigger, I mean, Grimani Systems has an upper limit, if you will. It's pretty big. We've, we've never actually built a theater where I think his speakers couldn't work, but you could, or somebody might have a requirement for more volume. And so you might go to an Ascendo speaker to, to, to do that. So point is, there's lots of different products in the market, and I've, I've spent the time to figure out which of those products I know I can use in your system to deliver the experience you're looking for and be confident in what you're going to get as an end result. That's why I make the recommendations I make. It's not profit driven. The profit is because I can't spend all my time doing this and not make any money. Otherwise, I can't feed my kids. I'm not independently wealthy. So hopefully that helps to explain, you know, when you're calling me and you're doing these consulting services and I'm making product recommendations, how that works. And one thing I've said to people is if you really feel it's important to to draw a line between that profit portion and the recommendations, I can act as a pure consultant. You have to ask for that. You would pay a little bit more money for the consulting side because, again, I have to make sure I'm making my money to put food on the table. Um, but that that is completely reasonable and something we can do. It's also a very common thing I do because I work with integrators and they're not going to let me sell the product, which is understandable. And so we work together where I'm the consultant. I do calibration and setup and design for them. They sell the product. I don't get a kickback. I don't even get a finder's fee typically with most of these companies, which, you know, I have to say would be nice if they would offer that, but they don't often. So you pay 100% for my consulting and then you're getting what is going to be best for you out of what that particular integrator can sell. So those are my services. That's my conflicts, if you will. Hopefully that's clear to everybody. I don't, I don't want to have situations where people are feeling like they were misled. And, um, you know, I think, uh, it, you know, uh, talk to my past customers, if you will. Most people are very, very happy. I think the worst thing I have, which is probably what everyone would say, is that I tend to be a little bit too busy. My time management probably could be better to stay on top of that. And so the worst thing you might get is a slow response or things might drag out a little bit more than they should. But ultimately, you're getting a degree of engineering and consultation that's well beyond what's typical in the industry and not what you get when you go to a typical integrator. So thanks for watching this video. Again, subscribe for more videos. Hopefully this was helpful and I have more videos coming.